Hello YouTube! Welcome to my slice of the internet. Today I'm going to be sharing 25 habits to pick up in the year 2023. If you're new here, I like to start videos out with a see a chug, take a chug. We've got a nice little mint blue feel going for today's video. We've got the scrunchie, the cup, the sweatshirt. So I'm sipping on a green tea today with honey. Whether it's green tea, whether it's water, let's see a chug, take a chug, and get to talking about some new habits. <coughs> what a way to go. Okay, so tip number one, we're going to verbally acknowledge, then switch self-depreciating comments and jokes to self-appreciating comments and jokes. Just to keep things simple here, I mean, let's talk about it as it is. Self-depreciation is so detrimental and so impactful negatively because it works. Whenever you think, think of yourself as a item. I mean, this might sound terrible, but think of yourself as a car. I mean, when you drive a car off of a lot, the value depreciates. Whenever you tell yourself these depreciating things, say you're telling yourself you look bad in something that you really want to wear or something of the sort, some kind of negative thought or verbalized idea, you believe it. <laughs> it works. You genuinely take that self-depreciation and apply it to yourself to try to take away your own value. And no one deserves to do that. For, that's why we're starting this off strong. Starting with number one, again, switch the self-depreciating comments and jokes to self-appreciating comments and jokes. Because just like we said before, the self-depreciation works just like self-appreciation works. When you start appreciating yourself and working on yourself and adding to your own knowledge on how to take care of yourself through self-care or whatever it may be, your value personally, the way you see yourself, the way you value yourself goes up. Self-appreciation works. So that is the first tip for today. And number two, set a goal to eat four times a day minimum. I like to do this just because if you say four, even forgetting one time leaves you having eaten three times that day. So this is just a good example of set your goals with a little bit of leeway. Give yourself that room to mess up a little bit because when you do that, you're much more likely to commit further through the long run than you are if you have a very strict goal and then you don't meet it and you get frustrated instead of having that expected grace and that leeway. So that's tip number two. And then tip number three, create some form of consistent content using a schedule. I have made a video about this, how I actually schedule all of my content for free. If you have goals to create your brand, honestly, or yourself or your social media platforms in a way that's going to spur growth in 2023, consistency is key. Start using a schedule. I believe in you. I know you can do it. And that's why I talked about the fact that you can do it for free because I know that so many people, it's so easy to sit back and say, well, I don't have to do this right now. The opportunity is always there, which is why so many people take advantage of it daily. And that's why you need to take advantage of it starting now. Start making your content on a consistent schedule in 2023. Then tip number four, use your notes app or write down a step-by-step -step plan for the following day, each night, following an evening routine, such as brushing your teeth and flossing or your evening skincare, etc. So this is really important because I can only talk from experience, but I am a bit chaotic personally. So when I wake up in the morning and I don't have a plan, I still get things done. Don't get me wrong, but it takes me a lot longer to get those things done than it takes when I have a plan. And this is just me proving this to myself over time. Again, different things work for different people. Maybe waking up and writing the to-do list for you is what works for you and you wanna make sure to have that list for the day. That's totally fine. But for me, I've come to realize that if I wait till that day, I'll find something else that's more important to get done than writing the list that'll build structure in my day. So I like to write out my plans for the next day each night following my evening routines. A quick little shout out on my TikTok. If you do follow me here on TikTok, I have been conducting daily evening skincare lives. So if you need some motivation or just some ideas on where to start with your skincare, 
feel free to hop on. There's no specific time, so make sure you turn on post notifications and you keep an eye out for when to find me live on TikTok again. Tip number five, walk outside daily for three to five minutes or stretch by a window or another source of natural light. I totally understand that it's not feasible for a lot of people to set aside that five minutes to stand outside each day, especially if it's a bit gloomy. Um, even though I love me a good rainy day. Okay, all of that being said, if you can even find a window to sit by it while you watch the rain or while you sit in the sunshine, that's one of my favorite things to do actually, you guys, to sit on my bed with the sunshine coming through, just glowing and warming up my face and even, especially in the winter time if it's too cold to be outside for long periods of time. So just get the chance to sit by or in front of some natural light to kind of bring some better feelings to your day and create some lightness that might not have been there before. And number six, have at least one talent show per day. I love this one. Sing or dance at least five to, or excuse me, three to five minutes daily. So this could be while you're doing your morning routine, or it could be while you're doing your evening routine. I really like to do this in the morning, but remember you don't have to be good at singing. You don't have to be good at dancing in order to participate. Okay, it's almost a uh, it's almost a plus if you're able to be alone, um, i.e. while you're brushing your teeth or doing your skincare, um, to just dance around a little bit to create some feel-good endorphins because that is what science tells us happens. Science tells us that you literally bring yourself into a better mood whenever you participate actively in singing or dancing or some kind of form of musical expression like that. So take advantage, Google it if you must, and see whatever you could do to have your little talent show. Personally, I love to sing to myself or to hum to myself. Um, and then tip number seven is going to be do not diet. Hear me out, I'll say it again. Do not diet. Instead, add more nutrient-dense foods to what you're already enjoying. Rule of thumb, something I've learned from a YouTuber here and somebody very popular in the registered dietitian realm, Abby Sharp, always, always, always go to your registered dietitians or to resources that you know are reliable. Registered dietitians like Abby Sharp are medical professionals. So they will tell you that, and I've learned this from her specifically, that when you add these foods that are more nutrient dense to your diet, meaning that you're currently say you're eating too many Doritos for your liking, instead of being hard on yourself and saying, I've got to cut out Doritos. That's my new year's resolution. Say, I'm going to find something that I enjoy just as much as Doritos that has a bit more nutrients in it. Maybe you find one of the healthier chip options or you just find a different kind of snack that satiates you, but you can do that while still eating what you're currently eating until you're ready to enjoy this replacement essentially without what you are trying to replace it with. So it's much more likely that you're going to be consistent in your health goals and take care of your body a lot more genuinely. If you focus, instead of taking things away, adding things that you know to be more nutrient dense to what you're already eating. You might feel a little full and that's kind of the point. When you're feeling fuller, it's easier to say next time, okay, well, this makes me really full, so I'm just gonna eat this and save this for later. And eventually, you know, if you're trying to cut something out, later may never come when you start genuinely enjoying the replacements you're finding. So do not be afraid to eat a little bit more at some point while you're finding these replacements and kind of testing the waters, I suppose. Then uh, tip number eight is going to be use dedicated exercise to build strength, build endurance, or to improve general health or stamina. So I think this is so key because the one thing we didn't mention using dedicated exercise for, unless you're somebody who is a bodybuilder or specifically in that niche, um, is your looks. A lot of people go into the new year saying, I'm going to do this and this and this for my looks when really we are much more consistent when we're focusing on how we feel because that's what is impacted first. Is that making sense? You're not going to see your physical results as much as you are going to see and feel 
your inner physical results, if that makes sense. A lot of brain fog may clear up or you might have more energy when you wake up. Those are still physical results. But if you're so honed in on the external factor of things, you might not even get to see all of the great internal benefits that you're getting from this exercise. So I am challenging you guys to, once again, use dedicated exercise to build strength, endurance, general health, or your stamina this year in 2023. Number nine is starting things with the bare minimum. Start a new hobby with the bare minimum. For example, this may look like starting that new YouTube channel that you've been thinking about starting, but you keep telling yourself, oh, I don't have the computer I'd like to have. I don't have the ring light I need to have. You don't need anything other than a cell phone and your charisma to upload here on YouTube. Same with other social media platforms. Do it with the bare minimum. Let yourself share yourself in the now. So when you've continued to share yourself so much so that you've seen where you've grown from the beginning, that is going, oh my gosh, that is the key. That really, really is the key. So starting with the bare minimum is where a lot of people stop. And that's what I'm challenging you to start as a habit this year is make it a habit to start new things with the bare minimum. Say, oh, I want to start this. Oh, I don't have this. How can I find a way anyways? That can take you so far. And I'm excited to see what it does for you this year. So moving on to habit number 10 is drink water but maybe don't push yourself to drink a gallon of water a day. <laughs> I only say this, I do, I want to mention I have a friend who drinks a gallon of water a day and she is very happy with the results. With personal experience on my end, however, I did want to preface that consistency is again, key here. Don't make yourself miserable if you're not used to drinking that much liquid in a day. If you have a much smaller stomach or you're used to having more foods that fill in what you're having in the day, don't make yourself miserable. Just do what you can to add more water. And slowly but surely, you might have more than you expect. So let me know, by the way, what you guys think in the comments below about the idea of drinking a gallon of water a day. Um, if you've been around for a while, you'll know that I was drinking a whole gallon of water a day there for a little while, but I no longer do that. I stick with drinking my teas and such. And then whenever I'm done with this, I do have a water bottle on standby. But I no longer use the giant one gallon water bottle that you've seen before. Moving forward to habit number 11, complete two morning tasks before you consume content or get online. I'm talking to you, Amanda. I am talking to myself here, okay? I am with you guys in practicing this one. I want to practice just waking up and maybe making my bed and brushing my teeth. And then I'll look at my phone or getting some water and taking my dog out and then looking at my phone. Whatever it can be, it's very interchangeable here, but I am trying to make sure I get two things done before I look at my phone in the morning time because it gets that five minute mark of just letting your brain wake up and see the reality in front of you instead of diving straight into the act of comparison that's so easy when you're vulnerable after first waking up because really that's, not, that's true. We're all vulnerable when we first wake up. So protect your peace, give yourself those couple of tasks, and then get on that phone in the morning. Habit number 12 we're going to talk about is commit to your daily hygiene routines. Here we go, morning and night. These can look very similar. Your hygiene routines are things such as waking up and brushing your teeth, and then maybe brushing your teeth and flossing at night. So they can look similar, but they might be different. Um, and if you wanna go as far as to add your skincare routine to your hygiene routines and a shower, whether that be morning or night or both, however your day may look, that is what your hygiene routine consists of. And I'll be the first to tell you that it is very, very likely. You will find yourself feeling like any of these small tasks are overwhelming. It's so, so possible and so common in especially the new year when we're taking on these new tasks and starting our new routines that we get overwhelmed by how much we've set in front of ourselves. This is a great example. I love skincare. I love skincare. If you see the lives, I have so many skincare products. Sometimes my morning routine is up to seven steps, which is not necessary. Because it's not necessary, I remind myself on the days where I wake up and have no energy that it can be one step. It can be brushing my teeth and then one step skincare. It can be just washing my face. That is better than nothing. So just brushing your teeth, doing that hygiene in the morning, getting yourself to take one step 
on those overwhelming days will help you fall into place where you're finally getting into a habit of like, okay, well, let me do this before I leave the house. It's what I usually do. So that's the goal here with all these habits is turning these into things that, oh yeah, I usually do that now. That's just, I remember to do that. It's muscle memory. Next habit number 13. This one is so good. Look yourself in the eyes more often. There's a lot to admire, okay? There's a lot to admire there. When I say this, I mean when you're brushing your teeth. I mean whenever you are using the bathroom and you go wash your hands and you're right in front of the mirror. Look yourself in the eyes. Just take a moment to look up and look at something that there is to admire. And I promise you, it's not gonna be something that turns your self-talk around instantly. I am the co-host of the Healing Our Homes podcast, and for those who have heard, we've discussed often how our self-talk is something that can be very heavy and very heavy on the negative side, that self-depreciation. That is something that can be so habitual. We are going to be adding new habits to push these out. So when you look up, that alone, meeting you in the eye, like just eye to eye, <laughs> you and you, is going to feel intimidating if you are naturally self deprecative. Does that make sense? Is that even a word? But if you practice self depreciation a lot, just practicing looking up and looking yourself in the eyes will help build some type of confidence over time. If done with consistency, create what you want to be vocalize that creation. Say I am actually very confident with how I look today. And I love how this shirt looks on me. That's just an example. But that's something you could do to make that switch like we were talking about earlier and looking yourself in the eyes will make this a much more powerful tactic. So they're very heavily intertwined here. Our 14th habit is fold your clothes right out of the dryer. This is another personal experience one. I have found that not putting them into another surface or onto another surface like the bed, the dresser, the hamper, that has helped me just do it as soon as it's done and then leave room for another load to go in. Habit number 15, Invest into skincare before investing into makeup. Again, preface, if your priorities lie in makeup, you're an MUA, you're just on top of that entire niche and world, that is entirely you. I have no judgment here, but I have found that investing into my skincare just as much as I have invested into my makeup, if not more than, has helped me feel more confident in my makeup, one, <laughs> and two, more confident on the days where I just don't have the energy to put the makeup on because let's all be real those those are the days that just happen it's going to you know come in 2023 our preparedness for these days and our expecting these days can lead us down a path of okay well i'll do my skincare instead i don't have to do makeup i don't have to get all the way ready but i can at least try this it's the small effort that is what we're building through all of these habits here so all of that being said on to habit number 16 embarrass yourself as much as possible. This just is another confidence building exercise. For example, you could start by gently dancing or singing or humming in public places. I, for one, love just moving and grooving in the grocery store. I'll have my AirPods in. I'll be, I also did Instacart for a while. If you are a real Amanda Lee fan, we have been around for a while since the Instacart vlogs. Um, I would put my AirPods in and I would just listen to music moving and grooving and getting all these groceries. And I still do it to this day while I go get my own groceries now. So that is something that is a great confidence building exercise. And again, it's doing something that dancing, that singing is going to build your confidence science-based. It gives you some kind of endorphins. I'm not sure what it is, but you can look into it. I know it's real. I'll put an article in the description actually. And I make sure to find those .orgs and .govs. Okay, don't play with me. She does her research. <laughs> so moving on to the next habit is habit 17, which is going to be change the mute. This is gonna be hard. Change the music you listen to based on the content and the words. Now, this is not an obligation. Again, this is something that's going to take time and is similar to the eating thing. You're going to want to add music that you like to what your taste in music is now. Instead of completely cutting off what you already listened to, it'll make it much more an easy transition. So when, why I say this is I'll add another article in the comments. It is proven by science, once again, that whenever we listen to music that has specific words, is relatable and it makes us feel better. We don't feel as alone in our struggles. But unfortunately, the continued listening to this music um, and this kind of seeking comfort only in this music 
is adding to the cycle of the emotions that we are constantly falling back into. So uh, I won't go too much into this because I don't want to misquote anything, but check that article out in my description because it is so, so informative and it is why I've personally become a little overwhelmed by music by these days. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want to listen to music. Honestly, that doesn't make me feel good. I don't want to listen to music about somebody taking actions in a relationship that I don't align with or that I don't want my significant other to align with. Like, it stresses me out because I truly believe in the power of music and in the power of what you feed your mind. So I've seriously been listening to so much lo-fi. I've been listening to a bunch of frequencies that are supposed to help you just realign. So all of that being said, check out that article for some more information, but change the music you listen to based on the content and the words if you get the chance. If if you don't, I it's okay. I forgive you. I think everybody forgives you because sometimes Sometimes you just need a sad song, okay? But then habit number 18. Oh, I just reminded myself, hold your chin high and keep your shoulders as far away from your ears and your head as possible to improve your posture. Y'all, I was talking to Ashley, one of the fellow co-hosts of the Healing Our Home podcasts about, or a podcast about this, and she mentioned how this felt life-changing to her. Because when people say, keep your shoulders back, we've all heard that, right? And I think that we've kind of become accustomed to the reminder to keep your shoulders back. But when somebody says, keep your shoulders far away from your ears, that's very random and very specific, and for some reason reminds me and empowers me to keep my posture aligned more than anything else and it feels so good so again keeping the chin high and keeping these shoulders far away from the ears and the head to improve your posture in 2023 and then habit number 19 is make an active effort to vocalize and express gratitude for small things now to make them big things later for example being grateful to have running water to brush your teeth and being grateful to have a warm apartment and being grateful to have flame from a lighter to light a candle, all of these things, right? And you might see this and you might hear it thinking, oh, all of those things are so small and I know they mean a lot to everybody else, but it's just never meant a lot to me. You know, I, I hear you, I understand, and that is the entire reason behind this practice. It never means a lot to anybody in the beginning until we start expressing it. It's almost like when we start telling ourselves, I am a lucky person in spite of what we're experiencing. It is the, it's the psychological power behind it all. So whenever you're making that active effort to address these things so much more often, it feels more impactful as time goes on because you're making it impactful because we have that power to make things important to us. So let's decide what we make things, what, decide what we make important to us in 2023 and be very, very picky about it. All that being said, habit number 20 is make an active effort to say, look at the sunset or look at the sunrise more often. Not, don't make the habit of, looking at sunsets or looking at sunrises, make the habit of saying the phrase, hear me out. This might sound like, oh, what's the difference? There is a very slight difference that makes a big impact, I feel. So when you say, I'm gonna look at the sunset, again, it's a very, very common, almost generic goal that we hear a lot. And I think that makes it very easy in the moment to not take action because everybody you know is trying to do this. Everybody's trying to look at the sunsets, but who is trying to uh, go into work tomorrow to say, I looked at the sunset last night or I looked at the sunrise this morning. Thinking more of saying the words I looked at is the power is in the assumption. So uh, assuming like I want to look at the sunset and making the habit of saying, I'm going to look at the sunset. It's the assumptiveness of the phrase look at the sunset that is powerful and more powerful in my opinion than the idea of reminding yourself to take action by saying oh look I'm going to look at more sunsets in 2023 no I am going to say I looked at the sunset this morning much more often in 2023 or I'm going to say I looked at the sunrise oh I guess I got those backwards you hear what I'm saying you're picking up what I'm putting down so that being said, moving on to habit number 21, take up space, period. Take up space, period. There's no other way to say it. In the grocery store, in the gym, in the thrift store, you deserve to take up space 
there's don't be afraid <laughs> that's the whole point I'm trying to get across here is everybody even if somebody is trying to make you uncomfortable more power goes to you when you don't allow them to because you know you're entitled to take up space you're entitled to take up as much space as you need the same thing goes when you're now don't be rude and when I say like oh dance in the grocery store have a good time to yourself don't go and stand in the middle of the aisle when you know it's a very busy day and all the couponing Karens are out you're just looking to instigate at that point but if you're sitting there minding your own business don't be afraid to lean over or say excuse me whenever you need to go buy somebody to get something you deserve to take up that space you deserve to walk where you need to walk wherever that may be in 2023. Habit number 22 is practice cooking as often as you can. Hear me out, cooking is a skill. So if you feel like you're a bad chef, practice can help. Don't stop by saying, I am a bad cook. I don't, don't say that about yourself. You don't decide you are something when you've got life left to live. Because at the end of the day, we all have this amazing superpower and it is the ability to learn new things and apply new knowledge. That is me. I say it all the time. That is mankind's biggest superpower is being able to learn new things. And we now have an access to information that we didn't have. We just haven't had this much information before, whether it comes to cooking or whatever you might want to do, you can find whatever you need to find to try to learn. So don't call yourself a bad chef. Don't get in your own way that way. Say, I am not as good of a chef as I'd like to be, so I am going to learn how to cook by finding information and trying to apply new learned knowledge. And I understand that people don't want to waste food. I will preface this by saying, start by cooking small things to add to what you're already eating. That there's, there's a pattern here in this habit building, isn't there? Um, but find things to cook that you're going to add to what you're eating. Just to get your foot in the water, get your feel for how to, you know, start cooking things on the stove and however it may be. Everyone is a beginner at something. Do not be ashamed to learn something as a beginner. I recently went through some career changes. Oh my goodness, I had a huge career shift and that had me out of the gym, which was out of my comfort zone. And now that I'm getting back into exercising after a few months, I feel like a beginner and my body feels like it's at the level of a beginner. And it's exciting, honestly. I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take to rebuild everything. I don't know how long it will take and how much new knowledge I'll need until I'm back where I was. How exciting. When you say, I don't know, think of that as an exciting statement. So uh, that being said, our next habit is 23. Be unrealistic. You've heard this before and it's so true. It's why I saved it for the end. Be unrealistic in your dreams. Be unrealistic in your expectations and be unrealistic in your manifestations. We are more powerful than we all give, give ourselves credit for. I guarantee it. And if you are somebody who kind of feels like, oh, well, you feel stuck maybe, or you feel like you're getting in your own way. Maybe after listening to this, you feel like somebody who's got self-depreciating thoughts. The idea that you can be unrealistic might be a little unnerving, but no, you're going to feel silly. No, it's going to feel like it's, oh, it just couldn't happen. Keep saying it even though it feels that way. Keep being unrealistic even though it feels wrong or it feels like it's not. Just convince yourself and keep on being unrealistic. Well, mind you, have these unrealistic ideas. I said dreams, expectations, and manifestations. Do not allow these things to impact the action you take towards paying your own bills. Add new hobbies by all means with these unrealistic expectations but make sure you stay grounded in what you need to maintain while you pursue these unrealistic expectations. All of that being said, we're gonna go to one of our last habits for the day. Habit 24, take yourself on dates and outings. You heard me, take yourself on dates and outings. Whether you're in the healthiest relationship you have ever been, if it's my case, or if you're a single Pringle and you are just someone who feels like you're constantly looking for love, Take yourself out on the dates you would want that date to take you out on. And maybe you'll meet somebody else that's out there, but 
you deserve to have those dates even if nobody's in your life and you deserve to have those dates even if somebody is in your life giving to giving those dates to you for example i go on dates with my boyfriend and i still take myself to a coffee shop right it doesn't have to be some crazy steakhouse to be a date with yourself you can go to the coffee shop and spend an hour journaling with your favorite espresso drink or you could go to the library and find a book off the shelf and sit down and read a few chapters and you can take time to take yourself on these dates and on these outings and build that relationship with yourself through this habit. So that's that's what all these habits are about really. Are it's building a relationship with yourself that you love because we all deserve to love ourselves, especially as 2023 starts to come to fruition. And I say that because I know we all have goals, we all have dreams, and they are coming closer. I am manifesting it for all of us watching, especially those who have watched now to the end of this video. You guys are the real ones. You guys are the reason that I'm able to do what I do. So Thank you for being here. Like, comment, and subscribe. And the last habit we're talking about is 25. Unfollow people on social media as often as possible. I like to do a sweep once per month, but you can do a sweep maybe once every three months, once every business quarter, make it a business thing. But unfollow these people on social media that you find yourself not getting good experiences personally emotionally whatever it may be from their content when you consume it even if you followed them initially with good intentions if their content is making you feel bad their content is not showing up often or their content is just not something that you resonate with anymore hit that unfollow button hit that unfollow button your future self your future feed deserves it and it's the same thing with that music you deserve to micromanage honestly what you and your brain is consuming through these social media platforms so by doing that you can literally make the most amazing honestly escape because when i scroll my social media now it used to be pictures of fitness influencers when i was really heavily into the gym and all of this and I didn't realize how much comparison was heavy on my heart until I unfollowed them and mind you I'm still passionate about fitness and I'm still in love with the gym and excited to get back into my gym journey let me know if you want to see more about that but I knew that the nice quotes that were popping up in between all of these fitness body checks were much more beneficial to my mental health and honestly to my exercise journey than the comparison that I was having and feeling seeing all of these influencers. So um, that being said, I am so proud of you if you've made it to the end of this video, not for making it to the end, but for being genuinely willing and wanting to improve yourself this year. If you are looking at habits, again, to improve yourself, that, is, that alone says that you are going to make this year incredible. So leaving this video knowing that I have the utmost belief in you in case no one's told you I'm so proud of you and until next time, guys. Bye. Oh, whoa, one more time. See you, Chug, take a Chug. Cheers.